So we're going to call this meeting of the school committee to order. Jean Fox? Here. Steve Owen? Here. Sherry Barron? Here. Robert Clark? Here. Sherry Gracia? Here. Laura Ramsden? Here. Will Sanquist? Here. And I see Lake Cam is recording the meeting. Is anyone else recording the meeting? Thank you. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Is there anyone here for public participation? of that kind that's on the agenda. Um, we have our student reps here tonight. We, we would like to have a, a quick update, if we may, gentlemen. All right, so uh, our top five students were honored at an S SCC Academic All-Stars Luncheon. They enjoyed lunch and heard a keynote speaker from ARHS graduate Jackie Bruno. Oh. Great news, the US News and World Report ranked ARHS number 62 out of 395 math schools, as well as in the top 8% of nationwide schools. A special congratulations to Jacqueline Lee, class of 2019, for her winning artwork submission to the Justice of Plymouth County Trial Court, entitled Law Day. It is now on display in the Plymouth County Courthouse. Students in chemistry and engineering were treated to a very engaging scientific presentation from Raytheon developers and engineers. Visitors from Raytheon who brought interesting and cutting edge technology afforded students in attendance with great information about chemistry and engineering and, as well as physics. Thank you to Mrs. Remy for making this possible. Special thanks to SRO Bartholomew, Lakeville Police Department, Lieutenant Perkins, Lakeville Fire Department, Chief O'Brien, Plymouth County Sheriff's Department, Deputy Department, Wareham <coughs> District Court, Boston Med Flight, Dalborg McNeven, and Midtown Towing for the grade 11 and 12 distracted driving demonstration. Thank you to the students who participated and the Superintendent Medeiros for his support of this endeavor. Our unified track team traveled to Dartmouth High School for a tri-meet, including Bishop Connolly. The team excelled in both competition and inclusion aspects of the meet. A number of students achieved personal records, and the 4 by 400 crew made a personal best. Math MCAS took place past week. Our grade 10 students worked diligently on this two-day computer-based exam. The biology MCAS will take place in June, and our grade 9 students are in the midst of preparations. A special congratulations goes out to Andrew Peterson, who has voted the SCC Spring Track and Field Boys MVP for 2019. Students from the Life Skills Classroom at ARHS traveled to Dartmouth High School to participate in the Special Olympics School Day Games. Physics classes attended Physics Day at Six Flags New England, and Senior Awards Night will be held on June 4th in the Falcon Auditorium at 6 p.m. Senior Banquet will be held at LeBaron Hills on June 6th at 6 p.m., and graduation for the class of 2019 will be held on June 7th. Thank you very much. Um, just a quick question for Mr. Wilson, Mr. Pacheco. Are, are you coming to the next two meetings? Yes, I will. Okay, nice. just want to make sure. We'll be sure they're on the agenda. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, so this is, Except you know, the I'm sorry. Minutes. Oh, yeah, minutes. I forgot the minutes. <coughs> Can't do that. We have the minutes of May 8th. Do I have a motion? So moved. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstention? Motion carries. So now we go to the highlight of the evening, um, which is right in front of us. Um, we look forward to this every year. When we first meet at the launch of the year in August every year, we try to predict how we'll feel by the end of the year. But this always is an is a inspiring evening for us, and we're so happy you could be here. Um, I think without further ado, for the presentation to the school committee of the Aponequit Regional High School Top Ten, I will defer to Dr. Starkey. Thank you. It is one of the best nights of the school year. And it's a tremendous honor to be here tonight to present to you the top 10 students of the class of 2019. And I ask that each of you students stand when your name is called and please remain standing. We have Hannah Levin, our valedictorian. Taylor Babcock, our salutatorian. Juliana Martin. Alyssa Martin. Aiden McSweeney. Hayden Lenz. Matthew Santos. Layla Johnson. Emily Porter, and Fiona Conway. Please remain standing. 
These 10 students represent the very best of Aponiquet. Collectively, they have taken numerous advanced placement courses, virtual high school courses, and honors level courses. They are members of the National Honor Society, and they have completed way more than 200 hours of community service. They are student athletes, they are student performers, and they are club members who have Laker pride and who are a delight and privilege to know. They have, as our core values proclaim, achieved. They have been resilient. They have engaged in honorable behavior, and they have advocated for themselves and others. And just a side note, nine out of 10 of our students this evening have been in the system since kindergarten, and one took a brief hiatus, and she will talk a little bit about that in, uh, in her speech this evening, but it takes a village. Each of these young men and women has summarized his or her parting words, and will approach the podium to share those thoughts with you tonight. So please take a seat. And I'm going to turn things over to Fiona Conway. Good evening, school committee. My name is Fiona Conway, and I'm so honored to be here tonight as one of Aponiquit's Class of 2019 Top 10 students. During my time at Aponiquit, I participated in DECA each year. I've spent every Friday night of football seasons on the sidelines as a cheerleader, and I've been a proud member of our National Honor Society chapter. I was also able, with the help of our very receptive administration, to organize a blood drive at school with the Red Cross last year. The overwhelming support from students and staff for this drive was amazing to see and made it the most fulfilling project I've worked on so far. I'm so grateful to Dr. Starkey and to our HOSA club for helping me make that event a reality. I would also like to take this opportunity to say thank you to the people who have helped me with my academic goals. Um, thank you to my mom and dad for always urging me to work hard and aim high. A big thanks to my brother Liam for all the motivation and encouragement over the years. Of course, there are countless teachers and faculty members I would like to acknowledge, but specifically, thank you to Mrs. Lippincott and Mrs. Ferreira for writing the recommendation letters uh, for my college admissions process, and to Mrs. Nardi for reminding me of my love of foreign language. I'm also ecstatic that Mrs. Nardi will be presenting me with my diploma on graduation day. Um, I've loved these past four years at Aponiquit, but with graduation just around the corner, I've now started turning my attention towards the next four years of my education. In the fall, I'll be attending Salve Regina University in Newport uh, as a member of their Pell Honors Program. I'll be majoring in Global Studies with a minor in Spanish, uh, pursuing a pre-law track. Ultimately, my goal is to become an attorney practicing international law. These are all aspirations that I hope will come to pass in the future, but at the moment, I'm just enjoying being here and savoring this milestone uh, and eagerly awaiting graduation. Thank you so much to the school committee for inviting us here to speak, and congratulations to my fellow classmates that are being recognized here tonight. We didn't... We didn't inform them about the gauntlet that they have to go through. Yeah, I did, but sometimes... I'll step back. Congratulations. I'll Porter, and I'm ninth in the class of 2019. During my time at Aponiquet, I was lucky to have many opportunities that brought me success. I got to be a part of the National Honor Society, I got first place in my category at the state competition for DECA, and I have received the John Sexton Band Award for Excellence as a freshman. At Aponiquet, I have experienced so many great memories, but, many, but my favorite would be getting to go to Orlando for the National DECA competition. Though I didn't win anything, the friends I made and the experiences I had were plenty to make it one of the most exciting times of my life. I also had the good fortune to take many challenging and interesting classes, one such as the AP United States History class, 
which was the first time I had such a large course load. They taught me not only how to work hard to achieve results, but also how fascinating it is to learn about the origins of our country. There are so many staff at this school that I am very grateful for. I'm very thankful for Mr. Polino, Ms. Cronin, and Mr. Rosa, who taught me to be my best self and strive for success in DECA in spite of my anxieties. Also, Ms. Rousseau, who helped me love math, even though it's a subject I've always struggled with. Mr. Ledworth has also been such a big help to me in high school, helping me foster my love for music, even though it's one of the hardest skills I've ever learned. I'd also like to thank Mr. Kouet, who, in teaching AP United States hi history so thoughtfully, helped me find the subject I really love and inspired me to seek a job in the field. Finally, I'd like to thank Mr. Cody for being not only an amazing teacher in European history, but also someone in school I find comfortable sharing my troubles with and knowing I will, he'll always have wise words to make sense of everything. Other than staff, I would also like to thank many of those in my personal life. A huge thanks to my family who support me in everything I do, and my friends who always know what to say, whether I'm at my worst or my best. Next year, I will be attending Bridgewater State University and majoring in political science with hopes of one day achieving my dream of be being in the United States government. One piece of advice I would give to the school committee is to give more funding to our music program. As a part of band and drama, I've seen how difficult it is for our directors to organize fundraisers for us. Therefore, I think it would be a great help if we were granted money, even if it were a small amount. Overall, my Aponqua experience was great, and I'd like to thank you all for giving me the chance to share some of it here tonight. Thank you, and have a great night. Layla Johnson. Hello, good evening. My name is Layla Johnson, and I am pleased to get the opportunity to speak to you tonight. During my four years at Aponiquit, I have plenty of experience that I have learned and gained so much from. I have been involved in sports, such as winter and spring track throughout high school and softball in my underclassmen years. I have made lasting friendships and learned how to manage my time effectively while balancing extracurricular activities. I made it to the state and regional level two years in a row for National History Day for my project Coco Chanel, Changing Women's Fashions in the 1900s. Meanwhile, I have served as class treasurer during high school. I found it a great experience to work with others and learn to organize fundraisers and other events that would help our class. Outside of school, I have been participating in mixed martial arts, specifically jujitsu, for the past seven years, earning my way up to the rank of a black belt. I hope to continue doing martial arts and keep training in college because I have realized it's such a passion of mine. I have also competed in two Naga tournaments throughout my time earning first and second place. I have learned how to manage my time proficiently while balancing school activities and feel that I got the most out of my time in my four years. Some of my favorite classes I have taken include AP United States History, AP Spanish, and AP Calc. These have also been my hardest classes and I believe that there is value in working hard to be successful in something. I have run into a huge course load in all three of the classes and would like to specifically thank Mr. Coet, Ms. Nardi, and Ms. Gray for encouraging me to always do the best I can. And I find myself so lucky to have all of the teachers I have in the past four years and coaches that have pushed me to strive for excellence in both academics and life. Some of my favorite memories include sports and clubs like student council. I have been involved in the council for four years and I've gone to numerous MASC and CMAS conferences during my time. One of my favorite memories in this club is going to the Worcester State Conference for the Massachusetts Statewide um, Conference for a week, and I really feel I got a feel for, sorry, I feel like I knew what college was going to be like for me in the upcoming fall, and I will be attending Stonehill College as a Moreau Honors Program Scholar and studying criminology with a Spanish minor. I am so thankful for the opportunities I have had in high school that have led me to choose what I want to study in the future. I also 
hope to study abroad for a semester to improve my proficiency in Spanish because I feel I am very passionate about this subject. And I sub hope to work in federal law enforcement in intelligence and investigation, possibly in the FBI. I feel extremely lucky to be attending such a great school that offers so many opportunities. Thank you to my family for supporting me and helping me get to where I am today, especially my parents and my older sisters. And my older sister, Kyla, who teaches at Gray's, will be handing me my diploma in a couple weeks. I am very grateful for all of my family that has always pushed me to get do better and work the hardest I can. So I am very thankful for her and everything she's done for me throughout the years. I am so excited to start the next chapter. Thank you for listening, and congratulations to my classmates. Have a great rest of your evening. Matthew Santos. Hi, my name is Matthew Santos. I would like to thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight. My family and I moved here from Taunton to Lakeville when I was five because of the better school system here. I received the Academic Excellence Award in Chemistry and I'm a member of the National Honor Society. I have also been a member of DECA for the past four years and a district finalist for three of them. Since my sophomore year, I have worked as a store clerk and rental associate at Winberg's True Value Hardware Store. I volunteer at my church, St. John Newman, for fundraising events at the Eponica Booster Club. Since I was young, I've always been interested in law enforcement. The summer before my junior year, I was selected and completed the Massachusetts State Student uh, Trooper Police Program. Last year, I was also a student intern at, uh, with the Lakeville Police, and this year I participated in the Ponquits mock crash. Given my interest in law enforcement, my most interesting class was criminal justice, was criminal law with Mr. Solomon, and my most memorable experiences come from my internship with the Lakeville Police Department. I will also never forget the field trip to Bristol County Jail with my criminal law class. During the session where a few prisoners talked to the class, an inmate yelled at me that if I was in jail with him, my shoes would be his, taken right off my feet. So from that point on, Mr. Solomon would say, hey, nice shoes, every time he saw me. My criminal law class and police internship reinforced my decision to study criminal justice in college. Therefore, my recommendation to the school committee is to continue to arrange and offer more internships with other local organizations for students to gain work experience and to help them determine their career path. In the fall, I will be attending the Henry C. L Henry C. Lee College of Forensic Science and Criminal Justice at the University of New Haven. I plan on having a dual major in Criminal Justice, Investigative Services, and National Security and obtaining my bachelor's and master's degrees through the university's five-year program. My ultimate career goal is to work for a law enforcement agency like the FBI, U.S. Marshal Service, or U.S. Department of Homeland Security. I want to thank all of my teachers, Officer Bartholomew, my friends, and especially my family for all their guidance and support. Congratulations to all my fellow students. If you would please turn your attention to the screen for a moment, you'll hear from Hayden Lenz, who's playing in a baseball game tonight. Couldn't be here. Hello, school committee. My name is Hayden Lenz, and I'm honored to have the opportunity to speak in front of you all today. Throughout my four years of high school, I've always held myself to a higher standard and always put myself in a position where I could succeed. I currently have a 4.5 grade point average, and I'm ranked 6th in my class. 
In recognition of my academic achievements, character, leadership, and service to my community, I was inducted to the National Honor Society. This shows that I do not hesitate to get involved, whether it's helping teach algebra and Spanish to my peers in school, or helping my local community raise money for the town and the environment. Along with my achievements, I made a lot of memories that I'll never forget. Going through the college process was my favorite out of all of them. I had a lot of help from guidance and my supporting teachers that made it enjoyable and I was eager to find my new home for my next years to come. I also challenged myself by taking AP Biology my junior year. It was a very, very rigorous and demanding course with a lot of time consuming readings and preparation for tests and labs. Mrs. Ferreira, our teacher, pushed us to do our very best. And she was so passionate with everything that she taught us that it felt as if her love for the field just poured through me. I would like to tell her just how much I appreciate her because if it weren't for her in that class, I don't think I'd be so sure on what I want to do in my future. Next year, I will be a part of the Honors College at Providence College. I'll be majoring in, majoring in biology, but on a pre-med track, hoping that one day I'll attend medical school. I would like to say thank you specifically to my parents who have shown me nothing but unconditional support throughout my years of high school. I would also like to say thank you to my friends for making high school so memorable for me. One piece of advice for the committee would be to hold more fundraisers where the students can get involved and support the community. I appreciate all of you for your time. Thank you. Aiden McSweeney. Good evening, my name is Aiden McSweeney and I'm here to share my experience at Aponiquit these past four years. I've grown up in a sonnet and have gone through the whole public school system. I was the kid who read books on the bus, on the bus ride to school. I was pretty quiet until middle school where I became more social and outgoing. I like to think I'm now a healthy intro extrovert. When I started at Aponiquit as a freshman, I decided to run cross country and track and haven't stopped running since. Now I can run a 435 mile, so that's pretty good. Uh, besides running, uh, I've taken mostly honors courses in five AP classes. I'm a member of the National Honor Society and DECA, where I've competed in place at the district and state levels all four years. My fondest memory at ARHS are the countless practices and races with the cross country and track programs, um, where I got in shape, made amazing friends, and learned about hard work and commitment. Running has grown to become a huge part of my life, and I have this school to thank for introducing me to it. I wouldn't be the same person today without it. My most challenging class was probably French 1 through 3, since I'm not the best at foreign language. And my most interesting class was AP Environmental with Mrs. Kirk, because I got to learn how we're destroying the planet, and I learned about the complex relationship between humanity and the Earth. Science is pretty cool. Uh, I'd like to thank Mr. Rosa for introducing me to the business world and teaching me about the numerous opportunities that are in that field. Uh, I also have to thank Mr. Rutledge for being my coach these past four years. He's encouraged me to improve every day and have fun doing it. He's taught me that pain is temporary while victory is forever. I'd like to thank my friends and family for their unyielding support. I couldn't have made it through these past 12 years without them. I plan to attend Bryant University in the fall to major in accounting. I will be running Division I cross country and track. That should be fun. Um, I'd like to recommend that the school committee keep expanding the students' opportunities to choose classes, enabling them to explore fields that interest them. Thank you for your time. It's only if I left my phone somewhere. <laughs> Juliana Martin. Good evening, school committee. My name is Juliana Martin. Thank you so much for inviting us to speak here today. I have been a part of the Freetown Lakeville Regional School District since kindergarten, and it has become a large part of who I am. My four years out of Pontiquit were extremely influential in my life for many reasons. I discovered my love for volleyball freshman year and was awarded my varsity letter junior year after making the varsity team. My team grew throughout the years to create such a strong bond, and although we may not have won, we were able to bring the Pontiquit Lakers volleyball team the farthest it has ever gone in tournament history. Junior year, I was also inducted into National Honor Society, and I had the opportunity of joining the for French Foreign Exchange Program. This really changed my life, as I now have connections across the pond and got to explore the beautiful country of France. 
This year I was awarded a merit scholarship from the Westport River Watershed Alliance that works to protect local watersheds. I was honored to receive this award because I am passionate about the environment and I find it extremely important to put effort into keeping it healthy. While I have always felt this way, my AP Environmental Science class really opened my eyes to just how important our role is in protecting the planet. This course truly motivated me to change certain parts of my lifestyle to live more sustainably. While AP Environmental was great, my favorite course in high school was also the most challenging, AP Biology. Walking into AP Bio every day last year, there was always something new to expect. This class took extreme drive and dedication, but by the end of it, I knew all of the hard work was really worth it because I learned so much and enjoyed every second of it. Ms. Ferrer's passion for the subject and devotion to her students really helped make the class that much more influential. As difficult as it may have been, I would retake her class in a heartbeat. Thanks to both of these classes, I have decided to pursue animal behavior and marine biology at the University of New Hampshire in the fall. While I had many amazing, many amazing memories at Aponiquit, there was one challenge that hit me rather hard. In the spring of my junior year, right around prom, one of my best friends had been diagnosed with stage four cancer. It was a very difficult time as AP exams and finals were creeping up on us, yet we were preoccupied with this overwhelming news. During this time, a few teachers that I had become close with over the years were there to help my friends and I through it. Mr. Polino and Ms. Ferrer were always there if we needed anything during the school day, and I am so grateful for their kindness. They both had a positive impact on my high school experience, and I want to thank them for everything they have done to help me grow both as a student and as an individual. I also want to thank my parents for pushing me to always be the best version of myself in everything I do and to my best friends who are an amazing support system. This school, distri school district has introduced me to an amazing group of people that I'm lucky enough to call my family. In the future, I think it will be beneficial to provide more opportunities for students, especially as freshmen, to get to know others that they may not usually talk to because sometimes the most surprising friendships are the best ones. Thank you to all the Aponiquit staff in general that have helped me help guide me through my high school experience. It has been an amazing adventure. Thank you and good night. Alyssa Martin. Uh, good evening. My name is Alyssa Martin. I'm 18 years old and I'm a member of the class of 2019's Top 10. I've received excellence awards in science for AP Biology and AP Environmental Science. I was homeschooled for 7th and 8th grade and when I decided to come back for public school, I was terrified. I thought I would have no friends and would have a hard time adjusting back to public school life. Thank goodness I joined band because it will always hold a special place in my heart. Most of my friends are in band who helped me overcome my trials while getting used to public school. I can't choose a single fondest memory, so I have to say it would be all four years of band class. While band was a safe haven for me, AP Biology was not. I never thought myself to be a science person, so this course really challenged me. It forced me to work harder than I ever have before and even actually put an effort to do extra credit work in order to boost my grade. Ms. Ferreira, who teaches AP Biology, helped to motivate and comfort me when I thought I couldn't do it and never failed to give me important and valuable advice. I couldn't have asked for a better biology teacher. I can't leave out mentioning Mr. Ledwith, the band director. I have had him as a teacher for all of my four years of high school and after school with the jazz band. Because of him, I have grown into the musician I am today and will forever be forever grateful for the enormous amount of effort he pours into the music department. Next year, I'm going to attend Brigham Young University out in Utah, where I'll be studying biology. I'm considering obtaining a master's degree in forensics and pursuing that as a career, but I'm still looking at many options. If I had to give one recommendation, it would be to create an environment that stimulates and encourages a passion for learning that would last a lifetime. Thank you.
if you would turn your attention to the screen one last time, we have Taylor Babcock. Good evening, school committee. My name is Taylor, and I'm here to tell you about my amazing journey at Upon Whip. What I have accomplished here are things that I am extremely proud of and could have not achieved without the staff of this school. At Aponquit, I'm a member of the National Honor Society, DECA, the SRO Police Internship, and I participated in the recent mock car crash. I was the recipient of the Science Award for three years and was awarded the St. Michael's College Book Award last year. The past four years have led me to decide to pursue a major in forensic science in the fall at the University of New Haven. At Aponiquit, my fondest memory was difficult to choose, but I decided on my honors English class this year with Mr. Wenzik. I have never been particularly engaged in English classes personally, but the way he teaches is so memorable and impactful, and I will miss going to his class very much. Specifically, I loved reading Hamlet this year, which surprised me a lot, but it was because of his enthusiasm and love for the subject that it was so enjoyable. For me, my most challenging and the most interesting class I have ever taken was AP Physics this year. I have spent many, many study periods in Miss Mill's room for extra help because the material is so hard to grasp at times, but it was still one of my favorite classes to go to, and I enjoyed the challenge because it was so rewarding to finally understand the topics. She helped me so much last year and this year, and she was really dedicated to helping me understand and succeed in her class, and I will always appreciate that. I'd like to thank my parents for helping me get here and always pushing me to do my best inside and outside of school, and I would like to thank my friends for making the past four years of high school so enjoyable, along with all my classmates and the staff here at Upon Quit. Thank you. and our valedictorian, Hannah Levin. Good evening, I'm Hannah Levin, and I'm delighted to be able to be here tonight. Throughout high school, I have been involved with many clubs and organizations. I'm the president of the Diversity Coalition, head of stage crew, Captain Math Team, and proud member of the band, Tech Club, and DECA. Throughout high school, I've received four Excellence in Science awards from science classes, along with other awards and scholarships, such as the Harvard Prize Book Award for my academic achievements. I have loved Aponiquit for the past four years, and my fondest memories have all been formed within clubs. I absolutely loved having fun with my friends at math team meets, doing some of my favorite activities, doing math and having snacks. I have also loved being part of marching, concert, and jazz band. Every football game, friendlies, trip, and parade were riddled with laughs and have created long-lasting memories. I think my absolute fondest memory may have been the last performance of The Wizard of Oz this year. This was my last night of theater in high school, and I was the most confident in the set and performance that I had been for any other show that we had done. I absolutely loved the set and my fellow stage crew members. The last night of the show was when I realized that I had become part of many families outside of my biological relations through stage crew, math team, band, and many other groups in my life. As far as academics, I think the most challenging course may have been my freshman history class with Mr. Coet. Although I've taken seven AP classes throughout high school, I believe that this freshman history class was the hardest for me, yet also ultimately rewarding. As a freshman, I was not used to having to stay up that late doing work or studying. Mr. Coet's history class definitely made me into a harder working person and helped me see the difference between middle school and high school. As far as those who have impacted my life greatly, I want to first thank Mr. So, who coaches the math team. She is the best coach I could ask for and makes math team a welcoming place where I can feel at home. I would also like to thank Mr. Ledwith for devoting so much of his time to the music program at our school and making us all into better musicians. Finally, as far as the teachers, I would like to express my gratitude to Mr. Cody, who I never could thank enough for all he has done for his stage crew. Other than my teachers, my friends and family have also helped me to be the person I am today. I would like to thank my parents who are here today, specifically my mom, who helped me greatly throughout life and especially with the college process this year. Next year, I will be attending Rensselaer and will be majoring in computer systems engineering. I will also most likely go for my master's degree, possibly in computer science or just computer engineering. My recommendation for the school committee is to keep doing what you're doing and make sure that every student has access to what they need to thrive at Aponiquit. Thank you for this opportunity, as I'm very honored to be here today. Um, 
Thanks. Thanks. And there you have it, our top ten. Thank you for having us. Oh, thank you for being here. Um, I'm listening to you all. Um, everybody can chime in, but I mean, Rensselaer, clearly wonderful. But I see all these places you're going and all came because you had four years that put you in a direction that you feel is your path. And for that, I congratulate you. It is hard work. It is a lot of work. But you did have supports. And as a school committee, our job is the budget. <laughs> that, that's what we do, the budget. It's really exciting stuff. This is what the budget's about. And um, we're grateful that you were able to come out and family members were able to join you. Um, it truly is an exhilarating and inspiring evening for all of us. Anyone else? Please chime in, folks. Yes, Derek. Um, congratulations to everyone. Um, it's important that you keep being active. I know I'm preaching to the choir because all of you have been very active in the school community. But it's very important that you stay active in the communities and in whatever your endeavors are. Um, it's very important, and we love hearing your recommendations to the school committee. In fact, people that have been in those seats before you have had an effect on our budget. Yes. And it's very important that that keeps going and, and your voice keeps going out in the, in the communities that you serve afterwards. Um, so we appreciate it and, um, it, it, and you've made a difference. So thank you. Anyone else? Okay, I guess without further ado, um, we have a break. And we're going to take a little time off from the school committee business so you guys can have cookies and we can all chat with you a little bit less formally. But thank you again for being here and have a cookie. <laughs>
that, that wasn't a mistake. There is Lakeville's work there as it relates to the parking lot in Aswamsted. We're hopeful that the article passes in Freetown as well, and they'll also be doing paving. If you know Freetown Elementary School, they're not talking about doing both parking lots. They're talking about doing the, the main entrance and the circle yeah. for this project here. Which was not Which, done when the building yeah. was renovated. So, so that's happening. We're waiting to hear for some additional grants. We, we have... We have lined up security work, so it is our intent, as long as our budgets are approved, to have the additional cameras at the intermediate school and the middle school. And if we do receive some of this grant funding, we're hoping to uh, move into the phase two at both Aswamsett and Freetown for, for cameras, as it relates. And, and I was actually speaking to one board member, I think possibly next year, as we, I know we still have a couple of meetings left in this year, but for next year, one, one topic I think that might not be a bad topic to have as kind of an update would be security in general. Uh, yeah. We do it for technology, we do it for a variety of other programs, but in light, and I think more for the community. I had a board member come in yesterday, Mr. Sylvia, and I shared with him kind of what access we had. He had been in, Steve, to see some of it, and he was pretty, and he compared it to some other communities, and, and I think it is important, we don't have to go into all the detail behind it, but I think it's important that we communicate dialogue that we're having with the police departments and fire department so it would be my recommendation that we add that yeah. as, as you we know we haven't it, done that in a while whether it be two to three times a year i don't think it has to be every meeting but i think you know periodically i think it would be important for the community here kind of where we're at i'd be happy to answer any questions relative to the budget we're, we're on target for 19 as we wrap up and 20 i don't know if the committee members you know what if you've talked about you know the the town meetings but certainly the administration We'll, we'll divide because obviously the meetings are at the same night. Yep, June 3rd. And we don't have another school committee meeting prior to that, right? Our next school committee meeting is June 5th and the 19th. Right, well, that's why we're all relieved that we're in pretty good shape on this. <laughs> um, any new business? Uh, uh, not new, but I just I guess I consider other just on, on yeah. reference to the June 5th and 19th. So I guess the good news is we spent, and I, and I think it's, the right thing to do, and I appreciate the committee doing it. We really kind of streamlined this fact, this meeting, to focus on students and, and their achievements. As a result, we're going to have some pretty action-packed meetings. The next two meetings, mm -hmm. we have three textbooks uh, to adopt. We have a biology, a pre-calculus. I'm giving you a little heads up to a preview to what you should see in your agenda and world geography. All topics that. Dr. Correa has shared. I actually have all those books sitting in my office if you are interested. Dr. Correa asked me to convey that it's every now and then when we put the packets together, it's a week in advance and some will say I don't get a chance and rather than see this 600 page, literally when I say 600 page calculus book, they are in my office and they're available if you'd like to, if any members would like to stop by. We have handbooks that need to be presented. Oh, right. uh, school resource officer agreement uh, nothing out of the no, no, nothing out of the norm. But hopefully the budget goes through. We kind of move. But I, I do anticipate um, some lengthier meetings for the fifth and the nineteenth. Um, the good news is, I guess, to keep in mind, by the end of the time, we don't have a July and August mm -hmm. meetings scheduled at that time. Uh, we did have a screening committee uh, meeting for the director of curriculum. Uh, Sherry represented the school committee. I met with Mr. Sylvia, who's the other representative. He wasn't able to make the meeting, but he's been part of the process, including screening applicants, and we're. We're, we're looking to schedule some interviews for candidates next week. So we'll be, we'll, we should have an update at the June 5th meeting as it relates to staffing. Uh, technology plan update, June 19th, second meeting there. Okay. So I, that, I'm just I'm trying to hit upon a couple topics that are yeah. kind, of, kind of floating out there to kind of see. Um, but like I said, as a result, I think it's, it's real, real positive. I don't know if, if Mrs. Fox is going to comment, so I'll wait till the end when it gets to um, other business. But... Pretty significant event is happening uh, on the yes. campus on Friday. Um, that's a community, um, not only our community, but for the entire state and the country. And, and, yeah, and Mrs. so Fox. it's a, um, I don't remember what it's the a, actual, me, it's medal a of what? Medal of Liberty. The Medal of Liberty for um, Tyler Trahan, who was killed um, by an explosive device uh, in Iraq in 2009. He was the first uh, service person from Freetown to have died in combat and action since World War I. Um, in the, and he, he comes from a very active and, and wonderful family. So um, Molly's already, the sister is already a sister's part of employee. the community. 
Um, Maureen Trahan was active in the schools forever when her children were in school um, and has, has stayed active in the community, she really has. And active now um, for families who have lost their sons and daughters in war. So some of you know, most of us all know, that the gymnasium, the new gymnasium at Freetown Elementary was dedicated to him a number of years ago. And at that event, they had the moving, the, the portable wall that had, in this case, the Massachusetts um, soldiers. So this one is being convened by the local delegation. And it's at Freetown Elementary on Friday, which is the 24th. At, at 10 a.m. Correct. Um, and I, th it will be a lot of dignitaries present, but most of all for this family, this is a, a definitely a, a pivotal moment in their struggle to make sure that Gold Star families and the ones they've lost get the recognition they deserve in their communities. And I think I do applaud the Trahan family for always being strong advocates for their son and for others who um, don't come home. Um, it was a tragic loss. He was a very young man on a, actually he was training, he was on the SEAL team path is where he was going um, when he was taken from us, very tragically, and it was April of 2009. I remember it like it was yesterday. And interestingly enough, his nephew, Molly's son, was born on Tyler's birthday. Yep. So, it, you know, where there's a will, there's a way. Good, good for the tray hands. So I will definitely be there, and if anybody else yeah. can attend, please They, they reached do. out to the schools to ask to use our facility, obviously named after Tyler. After Tyler. We, we, so our, our contribution was, was small, other than we obviously are accommodating. Mr. Ward has worked. We have our I'm third sure. grade chorus, who's going <laughs> to, and we've been asked by, by the governor's office, because it is the governor's office who will be represented who will hand right. out the medal. We may possibly um, see the we, lieutenant governor. We anticipate sure. the initial agenda is the lieutenant governor is supposed to be president. Well, she's in. I have a meeting with her later in the day. She's at another function at UMass Dartmouth, so I think she's in the region. I think she probably will do her best to be there. So, And we have all the representatives. We have all the reps that are going to be there. I think you'll have a number of people from uh, the Navy, uh, which typically happens. In fact, when we dedicated the roundabout to Tyler, we had then Lieutenant Governor Murray, uh, we had the Naval Band present, and mm -hmm. that was extremely moving. Um, and that, that roundabout is maintained mm -hmm. by volunteers, and it always looks mm -hmm. awesome. So, so it's a tough time, we, I recognize that, but if you're able yeah, to, certainly any school board members are, I know Jean is going to represent the school committee, at it. It's 10 o'clock. It's at the Freetown Elementary School Gymnasium. No, I wouldn't miss it for anything. Yes, sorry. Um, Rick, just a confirmation. The next meeting will have a full staffing update because I know there's a number of positions that are still. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, so it's a work in progress. When I, I guess I, I, I should have also added class size. We're going to have updates there, transportation. So some of the things, the reports that you have, we have kind of pushed out, those will all happen. I can give you an up-to-date staffing. Well, that's but, what I'm saying. Is that the plan for the, the next meeting? But I typically wait till I kind of get everything kind of finalized. We have a lot of mixed moving parts. I, I would say in the last three or four days, we have hired eight, six to eight individuals, some of which I would say 50 to 60 percent of them right now are taking new assignments within the district, so that it opens up another. So it's a little, so yes, I will absolutely give you a staffing, but understand it's a real fluid it's piece right progress, now. It's, yeah. And, yeah. and, you know, it probably better served on the 19th. But if you're seeing postings and you're seeing a, a grade three, I'm just using an example, and it's a result of someone moving to a different position. Um, and that's what's happening right now. So, Steve, I don't know if that answered your question. No, I, I, yeah. I think it's just a, a yes or that was the plan. I think that... To do that, okay. yeah, yeah, I can, I can certainly reference those positions that are currently ha that have been filled to date and those that are projected okay. to be. Um, and then the technology plan of the 19. This is a, a multi-year plan with some numbers associated with it from a budgeting perspective. That is what was, that was the directive given Got to it. the director of, of technology. I have not seen a document that okay. reflects that, but that 
that is, was clearly the expectation. Who usually does that? Yeah, and it is. It's, it's been about a month that I have to tell you the last two to three weeks for the technology department has basically been spent in <laughs> MCAS <laughs> bunkers, <laughs> bunkers, you know, with all that. So I, I think that's when I made the request about this and told them we had two June dates, <laughs> he took the second piece, I think it was just to allow for a little bit more time. But Steve, I'll, I'll communicate that again, and that, and it, that certainly is the understanding. Ms. Barron. Um, oh, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead, I sorry. Were... <laughs> go ahead, Sherry. <laughs> You're... Um, I, I don't have the policy book here in front of me, but I believe that the textbook policy to purchase new textbooks requires two meetings. One to present, understand them, and the second one for a vote. Will that be a problem for purchasing? No. It no, it won't be. be. No, I think that's why we get, we're looking at that the 5th, because then we can put it up for the 19th. I think that's what our policy yeah. says. No, I think you're right. Oh, good. Steve's yeah. going to look it up right now. Perfect. Yeah. Good. No, um, my, my, my understanding is these purchases are FY20 anyways, right? So orders that can be made typically aren't going to be taken. So we're not, we're not trying to spend money down from 19 is, that's the. <laughs> well, no, I think right. it's just that yeah. we, 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 in theory, have an opportunity to review and ponder yes. before we actually act. Yeah. At the second. I, I just think we yep. should follow the policy if that's in what it does say. Um, the other thing is, as far as the screening committee, um, we met this afternoon, as Rick said, I am going to send out an email to all of you asking if you have a specific question. Okay. Uh, Rick's asked us to submit questions, so if you can uh, kind of give that some thought, mull it over in your head for the next Don, day. I already have my question. Pardon me? I already have my question. Okay, if you can just email it back to yeah. me. I'll remind you. <laughs> I'm sure you will. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Steve, did you have something else? Um, just to wrap up the top ten, you mm -hmm. know, we always hear their advice and Derek brought it up. Yeah. Um, the three buckets that came across loud and clear, obviously some sort of internship work That's experience, huge. Mm -hmm. exposure. Yeah. Um, two people said it very loudly, opportunity for all students to be successful. In that, you know, we hear the top 10, but you know, there's 150 to 200 kids in there, um, and that may be something for the strategic mm -hmm. planning committee. Um, and the music funding the music. is something we hear every year, yeah. so I don't know if that's something that we can. I mean, yeah, and I, if I may, I just so you're absolutely right. I think that does capture. I think they talked a little bit about community. It was interesting was, how they yes, they referenced fundraisers, but what they really were talking about was community piece, which I think was nice to hear because yeah, initially I was taken back when I heard fundraiser, and then it wasn't really about. It was more about being engaged in the community, this, yes. the internships and the practical. I mean, that's that's real world experience, right? That's that's the direction that colleges and, and, and folks are going to. So it's clearly a, a direction we need to continue to expand. We really One can. of the challenges we face here, let's be honest, is the number of opportunities that you have locally mm -hmm. to do it, right? It, there's it, two it, things. There's that, and there's also, quite simply, and I was talking to a parent about that, the child labor laws really limit the kinds of things that kids can do. So yeah. Yeah. Who, was, who was with me when we were talking about that? So, Derek, I think the technology piece they can go to any of these stores and they'll whiz through the inventory or they can do accounting, things like that. There's a lot they could do that they that doesn't get in the yeah. way of that. I had a, a good sidebar conversation like many of you did with about five or six students and they referenced the other piece that, which I thought was interesting was music. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And so what I said to them very candidly and, and, and kind of echoed, I said, the committee listens. I said, and I, the example I gave there is in fine and performing arts is the art. Program. Yeah. In your time, in your tenure here at Pontiquit, it was one art teacher. I know. Look at what's happened with the expansion of that, just doubling that staff and the program. And I think the next step, we need to take a look at that in, in, with music. And I think that will happen. Uh, our recent um, assistant principal who was just hired at the high school has a music background oh, so uh, and I think is, is already offered some insight into that well, so um, Mr. Ledworth would be very ha very so helpful. I, I but I, I I completely agree I, I, I that 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 but that also talks about that well-rounded piece I mean it's very other than the AP classes and those kids they're usually talking about the, those other experiences yeah, that they've no, had right the band and but well, maybe to the business guy going to business who asked a very poignant question of our budget who gets the most money 
<laughs> so it was a pretty pretty direct question there. But, but it doesn't, I guess I, I was sharing with the kids, it doesn't take, I think sometimes that, that they feel, you know, they hear that, it sounds like a big task. It took one staff position. And not that that one individual made the difference, but uh, but it well, allowed it the, the program. It, you have yeah. to start somewhere. And, and, and it really has made a difference. And I think that's probably something we need to take a look at. I think we put a little bit more emphasis, rightfully so, in the middle school and intermediate school where we hadn't. And, and looked at some of those areas this year. I think I think well, we've we got, got that addressed. And I think for the high school, I think that's probably an area we need to take a look at and move forward. I agree. Well, I'd really like to see us do more internships. Um, if I had more time, I'd try to help with that. I just don't. <laughs> but I used to do that. I used to get internships for students back yeah. in the day. And it really yeah. is impactful. Amazon's right in our backyard. I'm sure there's something that can be. Yeah, again, child labor laws, there's bad equipment in there. So Well, uh, you're not in the warehouse, but there's obviously... Oh, you mean the technology piece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And you are correct. It's two meetings. Two meetings. So it will be a first reading, you know, a presentation, yeah. and the fifth with, a, with action at the next meeting. Okay. But they are already available if you, I mean, if you literally want to see the, the book, I probably it's easier to wait to see kind the presentation. Kind of clamoring to get right up there tomorrow. Especially for that pre-calculus book sitting there, too. So. Well, the review committee has to take the associated test <laughs> I was with that course. So. Well, I'm on the screening <laughs> If you come in my <laughs> office, uh, just in case someone was going to challenge me on that one, I've left, remember I taught biology, I left the biology one up top because I figured if I, in case some kid comes in and does challenge me, I'm hoping he goes to the biology book. I might be okay. <laughs> but other um, than that, we're good. Are we, I think we're good. I think yeah. we can adjourn. And um, thank you, everybody. This was a good meeting. This is always the one that makes you know, okay, we're doing some stuff right. <laughs> so uh, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Don't no, everybody jump on it. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you.